Now, yeah. Tony, listen, you've trained some great horses. Let's go, let's go straight to the stable. You're, you, and you have the nice odd runner. Was that your horse that won the Curra Rock and Roll Kid? Yeah. That one horse won twice in the Curra. Went up to the north and didn't like it. I went to Bellion Town, yeah. And I went north. to Bell and Robe as well. And, and then he didn't like it. Yeah. And then he comes back to the Curra and romps home again. Does he love the soft ground Rock and Roll Kid? Uh, he likes soft ground, but it's, it's amazing. I have never come across it before. He just won't turn a bend. And when why? he goes, I don't know why. Why, why do they say this about horses? He doesn't like going left-handed. That horse doesn't go like right-handed. He likes a straight line. What is it in the, in the breeding or what is it well, in I don't the know. mind? When I was starting training, I trained his mother, Millie's song, and she won up the curra, and her sister won up the curra for me. And 18 years later, here we have your man. We backed him in Ballon Robe. We came over without a shilling in our pocket. And he comes up and he wins in the curra. And he, and he won twice in the curra. And Danny, it was like he, do, he was doing handstands. It was all over. Doing handstands. And he couldn't win a desperate race in Ballon Robe or Bellistown. So I, I just it's can't just explain a, it's just a it. Horse. It's just the thing with horses. He just doesn't like turning a bend. So. Let's go, let's go to, to, to some of the, 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 the big horses in the yard. Asian Maze. Well, Asian Maze is retired. She's retired. Now. She had a She's cold fall about three months ago by presenting who was the best. He's the stallion, best daddy. Sire Denman. And yeah. Very good. Those. So that's exciting. And uh, that was my brother Tom trained that. Was, was Aisy uh, Mays one of the most exciting horses you've had through your hands so far? Ah, yeah, but we, we had some great ones with my father. Like, um, before my time, Height of Fashion was beaten twice by Arkell in a photo finish. Then we had um, Don run. Yeah. Grable won the big race in America, the biggest race ever run over jumps. And uh, that was a great day. My yeah. father sang the Rose of Moonkind that night. Over. Never the, the, <laughs> Americans, the Americans have, a, have their own type of Cheltenham over there, don't they? The big uh, thing over there. The yeah, they have that, that big meeting. And, and uh, it was worth $750,000 20 years ago. Unbelievable. Uh, I'd so. sing the Rose of Moonkind to that. <laughs> I'd, I'd sing Oh Beautiful. I'd well, we usually can't get I'd sing Oh Beautiful Mead. Come here. Uh, um, look, looking at the yard now, how many of you in for this, this coming season? Uh, I have about 35. I'd usually have 45, but maybe the recession, I, I'm not full yet. But this is the first winter that I've had a few less than, I usually have the full. Paul Nolan sat with us here a couple of years ago, gave us Kill Devil Hill, and Jimmy Manga gave us Connor Castle. Edward O'Grady has a good bumper horse called O'Huckagon, who said he could win uh, this year. I'm putting no pressure on you there, Tony. Look at these poor fat lads. These farmers, they've sold their combines. They've gone back, they've gone back doing the anko courses because things are getting so bad. Have you now a little horse that we can follow? I know you send out some good bumper horses and somebody in the yard that's given you a good feel that we can follow over the next few months. Yeah, he won't run that often, but I'll be shocked if he gets yeah, beat. Right a horse down. called Gus McRae. He runs Spell in the bumper. Gus, Gus McRae. Gus McRae. Do you remember in the, oh, Gus the film? Mm. Gus McRae. Yeah, what was the film? Some of the uh, westerns, was it? Yeah. Uh, Lonesome Cowboy. Lo Lonesome Dove. The Lonesome Dove. Gus McRae, and will he be out in a bumper? He'll be out in a bumper in Gordon, I think, in two weeks' time. Are you getting this down, lads? Are you and getting this down? This is what you call high-quality information. There'd be some crying if he gets beat. <laughs> <is> it, uh? <laughs> They'll be all outside the stable. Hey, come out, come out! <laughs> Tell me this. Um, you have some crack when it comes to the bumpers in Ireland, right? Because, we, you know, Willie has had astounding success, became champion trainer. But then when I see these bumper races, it's either you or Willie... Or it could be mags, yeah. and these are all tying for bumpers. It's a, it's a, it's like a monopolisation of the bumpers. You don't know whether to back Willie's horse or will you back Tony's horse, yeah. uh, and and then half you just fill it yourselves. Danny and Patrick, you know, they're, they're Patrick rides in the bumpers as well. So you've a you've a great strike rate in bumpers. Is there is there a bit of uh, healthy co stiff competition when you send oh, two two horses to Clonmel, one yeah. from Willie's, one from yours, and and yours come out and win the bumper? Yeah, well, the last day in Clonmel, Willie was favourite, Tom was second favourite, and mine was third favourite, and my lad ended up winning. But <laughs> I tell you, I'll tell you one thing: Willie's was about six to four on, yeah. and your lad was about ten to one. Well, I didn't think I'd beat Willie, but I can tell you one thing. Willie has some sour puss on him <laughs> after the race. <laughs> yeah, right. and That's great, because it's like brothers, isn't it? Oh, I can you tell grew you up together fighting and pulling hair uh, and baiting, and now you're like training horses, and it's still that brotherly thing, is it? Oh, I can tell you, he didn't like getting beat, I can tell you that. <laughs> did you ring him, or did you send a text going, that's a uh, nice horse you have there? What did you say? Ah, uh, I tell you know it. He, he was a little sore, so I didn't <laughs> say anything. But sure, it's great. It's great that it's it's uh, the two families and all the, all the Mullinses are doing so well. Just talking about Willie's horse, that cousin Vinny. I asked them. I asked Paul Nolan yesterday if there was one horse in Irish training or in any national hunt training at the moment, who would he like to bring into the yard? And cousin Vinny, an exceptional horse, Tony. Yeah, I'd say cousin Vinny looks brilliant. The speed he showed in 
to win Cheltenham. a Cheltenham bumper and then to win a Punchestown bumper is yeah, it was never done before. Outstanding. So, and he's by the great old Vic. So I mean, he has the pedigree. He's shown the performance. I'd say he's he's real good. You know. He's now, do you do you ever say to who spots the horses? Who, where do you get your horses? Do you go to France or does Willie give you a shout or do the Mullinses have a great uh, network of people to get the horse, to get to buy a right young horse? No, uh, I go to the Derby sale, which a lot of the farmers here breed horses, bring them to the Derby sale and you pick out the good ones. Uh, Willie has been going to France there for the last couple of years and he bought some lovely fillies, relatively cheap, you know, for less than 100,000 yeah. and they were proven. So, I mean, you source them everywhere, but I've had a great look at the Derby sale and I intend to stick to it. Can you go to the sales? We went to the went with Only Fools by Horses, which reversed to Newmarket at 800 guineas. We had 5,000 in the pot. Can you still get a bargain in horse racing? Can you still buy a horse? Dusty Sheehy told me about a horse that won in Listowel last week. I think it was Gary Yard. He picked up for two and a half grand. Mm. Can you still buy a horse cheaply and he can go on to be a good horse? Well, win races. The flat is big now. Uh, Danny rode a winner last week for Harry Rogers and he bought it for 600 quid about three months ago. The race was worth 10 grand, and it was only his first or second run for him. So it still can be done. Oh, is it, it harder done. in the National Hunt to get that stamina pedigree that you need to, or can you, what's the best bargain that you've ever had in your yard? Well, I know the, when I started training, I had a horse called a Fordy King, and his owner bought him, he swapped it for a half-bred mare and a greyhound, <laughs> and he won the Galway player. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I remember that he was owned by a lad called Charlie King, and his wife's maiden name was Ford, so he called it a Ford. And he King. won the Galway plate. He won, he won the Galway plate, and he was swapped for a half-bred mare and a greyhound. A greyhound. Mm. Michael Hurrigan. Michael right Hurrigan to took it. it. Do you know when you see a horse coming into the yard? Are you looking at the confirmation? Are you looking at the way he looks in the eye? Are you looking at the switch in the tail? Are you looking for a cocky walk? Are you looking for a horse that moves well? All that together, or can you spot it? Because you've grown up with horses since you were that high. Can you spot mm. a good horse and the potential in them? Just well, like them farmers and spot a good bull calf or yeah. a so good pedigree. Yeah, it's a bit like that. You, you, first of all, you look at the confirmation. Now, the confirmation doesn't tell you how fast he can go. It only tells you how long he's going to stay sound. You know, if you have a crooked leg, he's going to get hurt and that sort of thing. And then, really, it's his attitude will tell you more about his speed. And obviously, then the, the vetting, like if he's wrong of his heart, He's not going to go far, and if he's wrong of his wind, he won't come up the hill in Galway, you know. And uh, so it's a combination of everything, but definitely uh, his temperament for me is the most important. Yeah. If you have a trier... And the win to win. Yeah, I mean, if you have a horse that doesn't want to try, no matter how much you downgrade him, if he's not going to try, you're not going to beat the lab beside you. Why are we the best jockeys? Why are we the best trainers? Why are we breeding the best horses? And why is it so much in the blood in this country? Where did that come from, Tom? I'd say that we hadn't a shilling 70 or 80 years ago and all we did was ride horses. We were probably still riding horses when they had four-lane traffic in <laughs> London. So they were, we were still riding horses to work. You know, People were are, uh, naturally... And then we have the best land in the world for rearing horses, the limestone land. And like You're in an area here, right under you. Seamus Hughes, 100 yards down the road, has bred some of the best... You know, Marion's father. Yes. They know, they've bred some of the best show jumpers in the world. Um, Max Howery, who was a great man, was up the road here, uh, worked with Seamus Hughes, produced some of the most fantastic it's, uh, horses. It's definitely in the blood, isn't it? And, and in the uh, land. It's in the land. It's, and the modern farming is in the blood, isn't it? Yeah, well, like, I mean, it's all it's all the land that builds skyscrapers doesn't live in Connemara. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the land is good, so the good horsemen come to the fore in the place where the horses are doing well. And we just are very lucky on this small island to be the best in the world.